Okay, guys, welcome back. Uh, what we're going to bring up now is uh, a professional trader, one of our next presenters. His name is Patrick Loke. He's been actually trading for over 10 or 15 years. Um, very successfully, he's worked with the company for about four or five years. And he's our senior financial um, trader for the group. Um, he's licensed, he's certified to give general advice in nature regarding trading. Um, he's a mentor to many of our students. And he's gone from, you know, trading a couple of grand to trading six and seven figure incomes. He's also been approached on many occasions by large brokering firms in the country as their proprietor trader, which he's knocked back and decided to stay with us. So today, Patrick Loke is going to actually talk to you about the technical side of trading uh, Bitcoins. So being able to understand charts, identify a price action, what a trend is, how to buy it, how to sell it, because the technical side of it will be mainly for you guys to just recognize and identify the price to decide when you want to buy it and when you want to sell it. So he's got a vast amount of experience. He's um, highly regarded in the industry for, as a professional trader. So let's welcome him to the stage, Mr. Patrick Loke. Hello, everybody. Well, that was a very generous introduction. Thank you, Lou. Okay, are we, are we good? All sounds all good? All right, we're going to talk a little bit about Bitcoin trading. Um, now, as Lou said, I've been sort of, uh, avid, in, had an avid in, interest in trading for about 15 years. Um, in fact, no, for longer than that, I actually went to the stock exchange for my work experience when I was 14. And um, I saw this dude standing on the stock exchange floor pointing at stuff and a guy knocked me and said, that, makes, that guy makes half a million bucks a year just pointing at things. And I went, Whoa, how, what? And I was really interested. So at that point, I wanted to figure out how the financial markets worked and so forth. Now, um, yeah, I've been coaching people at 21st Century for a couple of years now. I get emails all the time saying, I just doubled my money this year. Thank you so much, Patrick, that sort of stuff. So trading can be really a great secondary income or it can replace your income. I certainly lived off trading for a number of years is my only income it's certainly possible to do that if you've got the right education and the right mindset but most people aren't really well suited to short-term trading or to trading for a living so we're not going to sort of suggest that this is about that this is just general information about how to interpret technical charts sort of time yourself in the market so that you're not guessing you've got you're stacking the odds in your favor at buying at a good price and if you want to sell selling at an appropriate point rather than once again just selling out of fear or, or guesswork okay so what we're going to cover today is okay the features of bitcoin trading uh, bitcoin trading is going to um, vary considerably against other types of um, trading bitcoin is uh it's, it's nowhere near as big as other markets like the currency market is a multi-trillion dollar a day market you know with the, the 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 they've got multiple billions going through the stock markets every day this is this is a much much smaller scenario so we can't do massive trades uh, but there's certainly features that we can take advantage of um, we're going to talk about how price action and sentiment are reflected in charts. We're going to have a look at certain patterns which recur again and again in all financial markets. In fact, in anything from coffee beans through to the um, Aussie dollar, through to options, through to the stock market. Certain things will happen again and again because people are still people and they have the same levels of fear and, and anxiety and doubt and greed no matter what they're trading, right? Does that make sense? Okay. Um, now we're also going to, yeah, so we're going to identify those chart patterns. We're also going to um, go into when to buy, when to sell. If you're going to be selling your Bitcoins, a sensible place to, to do that. And if you want to look further into actually trading Bitcoins, sites you can go to where you can get low comms and low commissions, I should say, and um, instant um, execution. All right, so. Can we see that at all there? Is that, is that too, too dark? This is just, this is the, this chart here is the price that we've seen Bitcoin over the past couple of years, okay? So I'm sure that um, Jamie would have shown you that um, it's been relatively, if you can see the line there, it's been relatively flat. It's seen a little bit of a jump up and then bang, it's shot up considerably um, in the past, or in the past couple of months. Now, did Jamie talk about, you know, some of the reasons behind that, the arbitrage in China or all this sort of stuff? Yeah. So. When stuff like that happens in a market, generally, I like to say, well, what's going on? Stay out. I'm not trying to chase some, something that I don't un understand and I, and I certainly can't predict. So what I want to do is I want to wait to, to a situation where I can chart and predict it. Okay. Now, 
With, with uh, first off, look, there's been a, there has been a huge amount of volatility lately, um, and we've seen, as I, as I said before, we've seen bitcoins in the past 12 months go from like under $100 um, up to what um, 12, 1300, nearly $1300, and we've seen massive daily swings as well, massive daily swings. Um, sometimes as much as 30% of the value of the instrument is actually uh, being gained or lost in a couple of hours. Now you you, re you rarely see that. Um, and that's something that, as a trader, it seems kind of cool and sexy to j jump in on, but it can also be very dangerous, okay, if you, if you get it wrong. So look, normally, the, the, thing, the thing about the Bitcoin is that you can capture these big movements, potentially, uh, without leverage. And the thing that what, when, we, when we normally want to get, um, if we're going to get in and out of the market within a few days, make some money, we normally have to use leverage, that be that CFDs, be that um, options, uh, be that some, some form of margin lending and so forth. Now, the thing about leveraged trading, when you're trading, when you're buying, say, a contract for difference, or you're buying, um, say, um, a, a stock or a, an instrument with margin lending, the potential for your loss is greater than you put down, okay? So you buy a CFD for a dollar, you could potentially lose $100 on that if it goes against you, okay? So that is pretty scary if you, if you don't know what you're doing. With Bitcoin, because you're not leveraging but you're still accessing fairly significant movements, the worst that can happen is it goes to zero, okay? So you're not, you, you can lose all your, 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 your uh, investment, but you're not gonna lose more than all your investment as can happen in the Forex market and the CFD market. So that's something that you can, that's good to be aware of. Um, now, Bitcoins can seem very attractive for short-term trading when you see these kinds of moves, but you really need to be able to predict the moves in order to, to, to profit from them, okay? So what we're gonna talk about is how to time your Bitcoin purchases so that, um, so that you can have greater profits and also when to lock in your gains. If, you, if there's been a big move up, you're not sure whether to hold on or not, I'm sure gonna show you some price patterns in the charts that you can look for to say, okay, maybe now's the time to lock in some gains, possibly wait for a pullback and then buy in again, okay? Um, now we're gonna learn about profiting from upward movements. At this stage, Bitcoin cannot be shorted. Does anyone, you know what that means? Short, shorting in the market? Well, shorting in the market means that like in the currency market or in the stock market, because they're big enough, we can actually borrow the stock today, sell it today to somebody else, then buy it back and then deliver it back to the person we borrowed it from. So we can profit from a downward movement, okay? We can't do that. Well, if we can do that, I haven't been able to find a way to do it effectively with Bitcoin. I'm sure someone will come up with something, you know, as it gains more and more um, traction in the markets, someone will come up with something like that. You can trade a CFD over Bitcoins, contract for difference. I'm not going to talk about that tonight, or today rather, but it is, ex I wouldn't touch it at this stage. It's too dangerous, okay? Um, so, yeah, so look, let's have a look at the next aspect of it, which is the liquidity issues. Now this is market depth of Bitcoin yesterday. Now market depth shows the number of orders that there are on the buy side and on the sell side and how big those orders are. Now we can see down here, that's 0.1 of a Bitcoin, 0.1 point, there's a, you know, not huge numbers on the buy side all the way down to here, right? We're seeing you know, one, two, four, five Bitcoins that people are offering to buy. People are offering to sell over here Hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds. What does that tell you? A lot of people want to sell, not too many people want to buy at that moment, okay? So if you were to try to unload a whole bunch of Bitcoins in, in that moment, all these orders will be taken up very quickly and your price would quickly erode. Does that make sense? Quick, very quickly. So the thing is with Bitcoin is that if you wanted, to, if you wanted to, to, to make short-term trades out of it, you can do it with say 10, 20, at this stage of the game, 10, $20,000. You put 100 grand into the Bitcoin market at this stage, it's just gonna move the market so far that you'll erode any profits, okay? So it's at this stage, it's not something that is actively traded enough to prevent, to, to provide us with, you know, a, a big trading opportunity. But that's okay, I don't think many people here are wanting to chuck 100 grand on, onto this, are they? Not at this stage, no. So if, you, if you're thinking about maybe playing with $1,000 and trying to turn it into $2,000 in a month by getting in and out, the potential is there for that, okay? But we're not talking about big, big investments or big, big moves. So look, 
any any large order is going to move the market at this stage. And uh, even when we get we get a um, bit more, uh, a few more people into these types of platforms and more actively trading, we're still going to have that liquidity issue. But it probably will improve the more people have these type of accounts. Make sense? Cool. All right. So. What moves the market? It's, all, it's always going to be sentiment and perception. It's never, there's, nothing, there's nothing else that's moving the markets. At any given moment, nobody knows what anything is worth, and they're just guessing. Now, there's analysts who are out there who are analysing all the time. By the time they've done their six-month analysis of what something's worth, it's not worth that anymore, is it? And it's only in that moment what I'm prepared to sell it for and what you're prepared to buy it for that matters. Okay? And so that that's means that it's always going to be a lot of emotion involved and a lot of guesswork involved in this type of thing, in, in, in trading, particularly with Bitcoin. Particularly with Bitcoin. Why? Because we're not really sure what's underpinning it. Okay? So technical analysis is the best way, in my opinion, is the best way to time the entries into the market because technical analysis is the map, the roadmap of human emotion in the markets. All right. So. Going back to my notes here, let's have a look. Yeah, so when we want to trade an instrument, we're looking for rhythm and rhyme, okay? Things that happen again and again. Now, before, prior to this, um, this large volatility a couple of months ago, there was a rhythm and rhyme to Bitcoin. It was going like a snake. It was going up and down gently. And there were little moments where you could buy in and little moments where you could sell. Then it went crazy. And then there was no real understanding of what to do. Um, and and it, as it settles down again, that's when we're going to be looking to, to be taking advantage. Okay, so we need to make sure that we're not just looking at big, um, big price movements and thinking, oh, wow, this is a great opportunity to get in. When the best time to get in is when it's quiet. The best time to enter a market is in the quiet times. Okay? The worst time is to try to chase a big movement. It's already happened. Now, unfortunately, that's not very bright, but here we've got, um, let's have a compare the S&P 500 to the recent Bitcoin charts, okay? Now, we can see here that there's been some significant movements in volatility in both these charts, okay? Um, but this is actually deceptive because this amount of movement it's a lot of movement, but it only represents about one, t up and down is only about 10% of the total value of the S&P 500, all those moves, okay? So the, the, the top to the bottom is worth about 10% of the value of the overall instrument. The movements illustrated here in the Bitcoin represent up to 70% of the value of the stock. So that's a huge amount of volatility, huge amount of opportunity, but also a huge opportunity to stuff yourself up if you, if you, do, it, if you do it, you know, rashly and you get in and if you go you're trying to chase prices rather than waiting for the quiet times to get in. Now both, the, both of these charts are telling a story but let, first of all I'm going to try to um, help you understand how to interpret the charts. So what have we got here? Okay so this is a candlestick chart. Who here has seen charts like this? Okay great. So each of these bars uh, represents a unit of time. And a green bar is a unit of time in which the price ended higher than it, than it opened. So it opened here, it rose in value, and then it went a bit higher again, and then it came down. Now, the reason why we're interested in that, if something is starting low and ending high, that normally means that the sentiment is to buy. We just started buying an hour ago, and we're prepared to, pop, to spend even more on it now. Okay, so that's a, we call it a bullish sentiment, a buying mode. What do you think this means? That's a, that's a lot of bullish sentiment. That's a huge amount of excitement. Now, I, when I first started to think about trading and, 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 and I try to imagine, like, the way that I, I trade is I imagine it to be quite primal because I imagine it to be where, like, hunters or where, so, like, where, like, where, where, like, this is, a, this is a typical scenario I've got in my head, okay? The hunters are out and they know that as, as long as they're in a group, they are safe and they can gather their food and they can, they can prosper. But if they're left on their own, they can be hurt by the wild animals. So they, it's like, go along and they, they, they creep back. They're creeping back and they, are you still with me? Are you, are you still with me? Let's go. So they go up a little bit and they start running up and then they go, whoa, and they get scared and they come back again. 
And then they're scared and they wonder what to do and they go, oh, like, hang on, let's just go back a bit. And then they wait. And then they're looking around and they're like, are you ready to go? I don't know, are you ready to go? Can you see what's happening? They're going like this. No, 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 are you sure? No, let's go back. Whoa, whoa. And then someone starts to run. And everyone goes, he's running, let's go for it. And they all start running. And they're running, 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 running. And then they're running and they run really far and they're gathering all the stuff up and they're all getting their food and they're getting, they're getting their nourishment and they're, they're winning. And then the last guy looks around and goes, bloody hell, there's no one else around. And then it retreats. Does that make sense? So this, is the, this, this compression in the charts is the indecision, the wondering, which way is it going to go? Are they going to run that way? And in which case, I'm going to be left to be eaten by the tigers? Or are they going to go this way? In which case, I'm going to run with them and I'm going to get the goodies. Okay? This happens in all markets, right? The average person sees this, gets excited, and buys there. Yeah? Who's done that? Everyone who first sees charts goes, oh my God, look how much it's gone up, and they, they buy. The it could go up further. You could get lucky. Most of the time, though, there are price points where professional traders are patiently waiting for you to get suckered in so that they can do you out of your dough. That's, that's what actually happens. So we, we, when we, we're looking at charts, there's going to be times to buy, times to sell. That's all I'm saying. The green bars are, are movements up. This is consolidation. We're looking for also not only what's happening in the individual bars, but what's happening in the overall price movement. Okay? So that's just a bit of information about how to interpret the candles. So uh, candle A, that's price moved up during this bar and closed higher than previous, okay? B, price moved down and the close was lower than the previous, okay, down here. It went all the way down then popped up like that, okay? Each of these, once you get to know, I'm not gonna talk, talk at length about this. Each of these bars, however, tells an emotional story. Does it make sense? And if we can read that emotional story, we can tell when everyone else is getting impatient and they want to do something. And either they're going to get impatient and go, you know what, stuff it, let's get out. Or they're going to get impatient and go, you know what, let's start buying this sucker. And, we, and either way, it doesn't matter what they decide, we can have, we can have an action planned for when, they, when that movement happens. All right. So if you want to learn a little bit more about how to read charts, there's a couple of good places. Um, stockcharts.com, and if you, if you then do a search within stock, uh, stockcharts.com of chart school, you can learn all about candlestick charting and how to interpret them. Investopedia also has a great section on candlestick charting, if you want to check that out. All right, so let's have a look at what's happening in this, in this four hour chart of the um, S&P 500. Now, what we, see, what we can see here is that, look, this is, the, this is the recent American stock market. So we can see that um, it recently ran up to all-time highs. So it, this is what we call an uptrend, okay? Now, there's, a, there's a very different ways that people interpret uptrends, but I'm going to tell you the, the proper way to interpret it. And that means it makes a low, then it makes a high. Then it makes a low, but the, that low is higher than that low. Then it makes a high, and that high is higher than that high then it makes a low, and that low is higher than that low. That is an uptrend. There's no two ways about it. That's how you, that's how you read a trend. If it is trending upward, it is moving upwards, okay? What we don't want to do is when we want to get into a market, where do we buy? We want to buy it below, okay? We want to buy it below, and we want to, we want to know that, that it's a low by finding a, a, a particular formation in the chart that indicates that it's a low that's going to reverse. And I'll show you how to do that, okay? So it, it, it did that run up, and at that the point it consolidated and struggled to move higher, and we call that resistance. And that price point was repeatedly hit, and it couldn't be broken. Can you see here, here, and here? So we had a run up, and people got scared. They said, this is just too high, and then it pulled back. We had a run up, and people said, this is nah. They would refused to believe that it was going to go past that previous. They got so scared that it pulled all the way back here, right? but not below this, which was very important because they were scared, but they weren't so scared as to just dump it, right? And we'll, we'll have a look at the, um, the Bitcoin chart in a minute and we'll see what actually happened psychologically with Bitcoin recently. What happened here? Had another crack at the 1800 and whatever, 1812, but, they re but the market refused to go through. What's happening now psychologically to everyone? They're going, it's not gonna go higher. Oh my God, I've just bought in at this ridiculously high price, I'm out. 
So they started to get out, and look how fast it dropped. In a, in a day and a half, it gave up all those gains. And this is significant. This is very significant over here. Why is that significant? That's a new low. And not only did it take out this, but it took out this one as well. Okay? Not quite this one. So that means that the sentiment is there was the people who were, were thinking that this price point and this price point were good buy ins are now out. They're saying, no, forget it. So what's happened is it's come all the way down here and then it's testing that, that high again. Now, what's going to happen if, is that now, if, that, if it fails to breach that, then the confidence is really going to be gone, isn't it? We tried so many times. We tried to get to that field so many times and everyone just chickened out. Oh, these guys are not coming with me. Does that make sense? So they get to that, the edge of the field, they, they look at each other and they go, let's just get out of here. You know, that's the, that's the, the psychology behind it. But if someone runs, it's going to be like that Roger Bannister forming at mile. Everyone's going to, it's possible. And they're all going to follow through. Okay. Does that make sense? Cool. So this is a very important moment in the S&P 500 to see whether we're going to go onto new highs and we're going to shake off, you know, the, the, the fear or whether we're going to succumb to a correction. Okay. Can you see that guys? Is that, a, is that clear enough or not really? No. All right. That's unfortunate. Okay. So what we can see here is Bitcoin's moved up and there's the top and that's the 1200. And then we can see that it pulled down. So it went up here, it pulled down to here. All right, and this is mid-November. It's gone up and it's touched that 1225 again. And then it's come all the way down to what's that 525 bucks from a high up there. It's touched here and then gone lower. Here, lower, here, lower, lower, lower. So it's in a downtrend, okay? Now, Jamie asked me, can you go out and buy some bitcoins this week? And I looked at that and went, no, I'm not going to. Because it just kept on going. There was no, there was no indication of a recovery. I, I, I just went through the exercise to, to test out one of the, um, the sites, but I was waiting until we saw some kind of pattern correction before going and buying Bitcoin because I just didn't see any, any reason to be buying in this, in this downtrend, okay? So the thing is that you could be thinking to yourself, gee, the price is coming down. I don't, it's going to go back up. I don't want to miss out. But I'm going to show you how you can pick times when you're going to be more likely to get some success with that. All right. Now, since the volatility of Bitcoin has been, you know, has, has faded down, um, we can see that at some stage it's going to go back into a range. And, and I think Jamie touched on that earlier. Once a level of support of, of, of a minimum sort of consensus price is reached, that's when we're going to be more happy to be in and out of Bitcoin as a trader. Does that make sense? And this is a beautiful illustration. This is not Bitcoin, obviously. This is another uh, chart. It doesn't matter what it is, but it just shows you a nice ranging market. Okay, and it also shows some beautiful entry points, right? Which I'm going to show you how to pick again and again. And this, this is again and again. And here and here, these are all predictable and very easily spotted chart patterns. And I'll show you exactly how to spot these patterns so that you can tell when a reversal is most likely to happen. This is an example of an uptrend. And we can see here that it's making higher highs and higher lows and off it goes. All right, so ideally, we're, if we, if for, the, for people who want to purchase Bitcoin for long-term purchases, we're going to buy in these dips and we're going to then just hold on to them. And then once we get some more cash, we're going to wait. We're not going to randomly buy. We're going to wait for a dip, look for a reversal pattern, and then we're going to buy again. Make sense? Alrighty, so where are we? Okay, so we're going to look at a couple of candlestick patterns. Uh, where are we? There. Okay. These patterns work in any market. They are highly, highly predictable reversal patterns. This is what I'm saying. Like, let's let, let, when you when you go to to a chart, you can you can set up to have just candlesticks or bars or what have you. And then any charting package will allow you to do this. And then you can set it to a time frame. Now, for currencies like Bitcoin. 
going down to like a five minute bar, as far as I'm concerned, is just madness. You want it to look, in my opinion, at something like a four hour or a one hour time frame. So this bar represents what happened in hour number one. It, it's come down, right? Then the next hour, for instance, this bar, including its little wicks, is completely contained within that one. We call that, in, in charting terms, either harami, or we call that an inside bar. It doesn't matter what it's called, really, as long as you can recognize what it looks like. Then, and we're looking for, you know, once you understand support and resistance lines as well, if that's come down to, the, to where we'd expect some support, like we saw back, if we saw back here, that it's, it's hit there, and this is approximately the, the support zone, the, the approximately the point that it runs down to. Let's have a look here. You see how this, this one here, and then that's completely inside, and then it moves above the close of that one, and then it takes off, okay? And that's completely contained in there, yeah? And then it takes off, that one's completely contained in there, and then it takes off, that's completely contained in that previous one. Does that happen a few times? Okay. Once it pulls down to a, a logical form, area of support where historically it seems to find some, some, some buying and you see this pattern happen, that is a good time to buy. This is the crazy time to buy when it's just done two big things like this. Okay? But that's when most people jump in and that's why we saw the crazy volatility because people who don't know about trading, I believe, were, were actually driving the market in the past couple of months. Would that, would that make sense? People are going, what the heck is this? Bitcoin is going up. Oh my God, it just went up 500 bucks. I'm buying it now. Okay, which is, you know, if you, once the horse is bolted, I don't think it's worth trying to chase it. All right, so let's look at the other one. The other is what we call an engulfing candle or a vertical outside bar. What happens here is there's a little candle or a little bar, and then the next one goes down below it or it goes all the way above it, then the next one goes up and goes higher than that close. In that psychology I was talking about before, what this means is that there was a panic. Then what happened here? It's all quiet. What are we going to do? Thinking about it. Then someone bolts and everyone follows. Make sense? It's just as likely that they could have a, have a, um, a, a, a rest here then it will go down and then shoot down. But of course, we're not gonna be <laughs> buying in that situation. That's why we wait for this one to see after our little camp, after our little, what are we gonna do session, we've decided to go up and that's when we're gonna go up, okay? This one here, we're waiting, we're getting impatient, there's pressure building, we're wondering what to do. We have a little look this way. No, nah, that's not the way we're gonna go. Then we go that way, make sense? So psychologically what's happened is, are we going to sell? Let's sell. Oh, no one's selling. And then they run the other way. Make sense? Then confirming that is another up upward movement and off that goes. And you know, if that happens over the course of say three hours or nine hours, that's a typical situation that you'd be wanting to look at. And it means you don't have to look at the charts all the time and be staring at them for hours and hours. If you're looking at a four hour chart, just check it. If that, if that pattern's not happening, just don't worry about it. You know? Now here's that uptrend. And here's another thing that you can be looking for in, um, in the charts, and that's what's called a consolidation pattern, a squeeze or something like that. So we're seeing here, this is a, this is a four hour chart. So for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So for about three days, <laughs> it's in this little band here. And so what's happening is people are like, oh, what are we doing? What are we doing? They're really wanting to buy something or they want to get out, you know? And then, so if we can see like touch, 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 and then a breach of that, let's say we're, we're thinking, well, I've got my Bitcoin money sitting in my account and it's doing this. This is the quiet time, all right? As soon as a little bit of noise happens to the upside, what we're gonna do is we're gonna think that now's the time to potentially buy. See that one there? Little inside one after that one and up it went another consolidation pattern, then up it went. So these types of patterns, you'll, if you go home and you just check these out, these will happen again and again and again in every financial market. 
and certainly in the Bitcoin market. All right, so what we're going to see here is now, if, you, if you're trading it, not if you're investing, what I'm showing you here works for investing. So if you want to hold some money and then you think to yourself, look, maybe I want to um, add another $10,000, but I'm not sure when to do it, maybe here, okay? Or maybe one of those pullbacks. Particularly, pullback's a good time because it's, it, the market's pulled back, it's cheaper, you can get in and you can make some quick gains. But when do you get out if you're trading it? If you want to make cash, if you want to cash flow, if you want to buy at 1,000, sell it at 1,200, buy at 1,000, sell it at 1,200. Well, you're just looking for a reversal, okay? Which is the opposite of a buy. Does that make sense? So a small one followed by a big red one, okay? So that means we got some indecision, it went up, then it dropped dramatically, and then on that next little uh, one down there, that's the confirmation that that is a reversal and it's probably gonna go down. So we can get out at that stage. And, and go back to cash and potentially buy back in at another stage. All right, we can see here, the little one here went down, little one there went up. Now, why are we selling there? Who wants to hazard a guess? We got that big dark red candle there. Hopefully. See this one here? That's the tie and that's the low. This little one, this little sucker here, that's the indecision. That's that little waiting time. Then it starts to go down. We actually would be selling here. One, as soon as it goes past here, we're gonna be selling. So we're not waiting for that whole thing to happen. We're gonna sell there and we're gonna be you know, getting out. Now as it happened, it did recover from that. But that's okay, because that could quite, as, quite easily just continue down. The other thing is, for those of you who are paying attention, what happens here? little inside day and another one up. So you could sell there and buy back in there anyway, okay? All right, now, what are the different reasons why we might want to, um, to utilize these strategies? Well, obviously, um, we can use a trading platform to put in stop orders. Now, this is a bit more advanced, um, but you, you can utilize the, the, uh, the exchange if you want, like if you, you, you um, your Mount of Satoshi, your Volta Satoshi exchange or what have you in order to set what we call stop order orders. So that means that you set the order to buy at a certain price or sell at a certain price, okay? And it will only sell off really, obviously if, it, if the price moves towards that price and then breaches that price, okay? Now, we can use this below established support lines. Let's say we're holding, you know, $10,000 worth of Bitcoin and we're saying, well, I've made I've made a thousand bucks on it. I don't want to lose any money on it. Um, so I'll, you, you look for a, a support period, like where it's touched again and again and again in the chart, draw a line there. So if it goes below that, I'm going to sell, okay? I'm going to sell because I want to, I want to get back to cash. I don't want to, I want to lock in my money, okay? That's one way you can do it. Now be careful when you're doing these types of orders. If you've got a lot of money, if you've got $60,000 in there, you might think you're selling it at $1,000, but by the time it fills all your orders, you might be selling it at 700, okay? So, just be careful with that. But you can use, the, the good thing about understanding this, this, these types of processes is that you can be, not be watching the computer, but you can be uh, being prepared to take action. Does that make sense? You can be prepared. All right. So this is what I'm talking about. Let's say we've bought our Bitcoins down here and it's done a bit of a march up and then it's going sideways. Let's say we bought down here and it's going sideways. And we're not wanting to watch every single candle. Well, at that blue line, potentially, we say, okay, I want to sell on stop, which means if it drops below this line, I want to be out, okay? That will, then you get an alert, an email alert to say that you've, you've had that, that sold, and you can then go back to the market and say, well, do, when, I'm going to look for another price pattern to get back in again, okay? That's one thing that you can be looking for. But remember, guys, that there's going to be trends and ranges in the market. All right, so what we're looking for is we wanted to jump on a trend as it starts, and we're wanting to jump on the breakout of a range. Okay, you can also use this in order to get, to put, to, to buy, um, and this is what I was gonna do yesterday, and that, would, and that was quite a good idea. So this was yesterday, I did this um, slideshow yesterday. This is, um, this is Bitcoin as of yesterday afternoon, in a downtrend. Okay, then it hit a bottom, it hit a higher low, 
and I said to myself, okay, it's broken out of this downwards trend. If it goes up through here, that's a buy signal. What did it, what did it go to today? 700 and... So if we'd bought in here, you would have, you know, you'd have made $50, $60 at least profit this, this morning by putting that, that in there. And I didn't know that was gonna happen, but I just thought it's been downtrending. It's hit here. This is a logical point of breakthrough. If it breaks through there to the upside, I wanna buy that. Once again, be cautious with putting big orders on. At this stage, we'd, we'd do that with maybe five or $10,000 tops. We're not gonna do that with uh, all, all our dough. All right, so any questions at this stage? No? Cool. All right, so if you wanted to, um, if you wanted to trade Bitcoin, you're gonna be needing to make sure that you're not doing it through a high priced exchange. If, you, if you're paying three, four, five percent commission on, it, on doing it, they're gonna do a lot of stuff for you, uh, but it's gonna be higher price. You wanna have access to live technical charts within the platform ideally, okay? Now this, is, this, this website is the, the Vault of Satoshi, this is an exchange. Now they've got relatively low transaction costs, about half a percent, something like that, relatively low. Um, you can deposit cash into that and um, then you can buy Bitcoins, okay? And you can trade them, you can buy and sell them on, on that platform. So you put in an order, okay? And you can put in an order for a particular price, put it into the market. If it, it, once it hits that price, it can be filled. You can do tiny little units. You can do, you know, $5 worth, $10 worth, whatever you want, okay? This particular order was 0 0.05 of a Bitcoin uh, with a total of the value of $35, okay? So you get tiny little orders and, and trade the small amounts if you want to. Um, with, when you're going to be utilizing um, a, a, anything with, with Bitcoin, it's a good idea to have uh, multiple levels of security. So you'll find that if, if you, you'll, you'll, you'll put your password in and then it'll say, thanks for your password, we're gonna email you another password, which has been automatically generated. And you take that password, you put it in, and then you can enter the site. The reason that they do that is because what happens if this, this, this the security around um, Bitcoin is not the same as the security around other currencies. If someone can hack in to your account and, and transfer the Bitcoins out, they're gone. Okay, and there's, there's pretty much no way to get them back, which is why you wanna have that multiple level of protection in, the, um, in security, okay? Um, not only can you do Bitcoins, but you can do other kinds of virtual currency through these types of platforms, Litecoin and so forth. Um, and they'll, they'll behave slightly differently. So if you, want to, if you want to learn about charting, if you want to learn about how to um, you know, get the best kind of returns, there'll be times when Bitcoin will be stagnant, but Litecoin will be jumping all over the place and that can provide some opportunities if you want to get in and, and start trading that. Um, but you can see here once again that the amount that's being traded, this is once again the, um, the market depth. And we're looking at, you know, nine, 50, not, it's not a huge um, amount that's being um, traded at any particular price point. So once again, the volatility isn't massive. Uh, sorry, the volatility can be massive, but the, the liquidity isn't necessarily gonna be massive. So we, when, when trading, make, we're not wanting to do big, big, big orders. I just keep saying that again and again, because this is how people get into trouble. You know, they, they see this price, oh, I'm gonna buy it at 23, fantastic. They put in an order and they end up buying most of it at 36. Okay, so that's, that's the thing. Um, inside the, the Vault of Satoshi, you've got, you've got, you, can, you can place your orders. I've, I've placed a couple of orders in there. They're in the market until they get filled. Uh, I'm expecting those to get filled in the next few days. We've bought on a pullback and, and we're gonna sell them at a profit fairly shortly. However, if you wanna get more serious about it, if you want to um, be day trading Bitcoin, if you want to day trade Bitcoin, then you, you pretty much are going to need to get a platform like this. And, and this is a real time a Bitcoin online trading platform. So what happens is that um, they don't take your money. They link your, um, your um, Bitcoin account to there. You, you buy and sell within their platform and they charge you a fee, but, the, but they don't have access to your, to your Bitcoins, if, if that makes sense. They've got 
all the market information there. They've got all your fancy charts. Um, if you get into charting, they've got loads of indicators in there, so you can actually um, make make use of that. Um, and so all you need to do is you, you get an AP, you take your API key from your from your wallet, link it into this site, and then um, you can you can trade your money or your bitcoins through them. Okay, just make sure that you don't give them the ability to um, transfer money out of your account. Okay. They're very clear on that. There's instructions all throughout there. All right, cool. So that's basically a, a brief introduction to, to trading. So the thing is that most people aren't suited to short-term trading. Psychologically, there's, you know, if you can, if you imagine a, a highly volatile um, mo movement happening all the time, you're jumping around, your heart's skipping a beat. If your heart is going faster while you're looking at a chart, you probably shouldn't actually be be trading. Okay. Um, you want to come to trading with a with a with a um, what I call a confident expectation of success. So you need to be looking at these chart patterns again and again, seeing seeing how they, they work out. If you decide that you want to actually um, just invest, then you can utilize those patterns to look at the pullbacks and say, okay, I'm going to jump into the market now at this particular price point, and then you know just hold on to them, and then you know just buy on the next dip. If you want to actively trade it, I, I would certainly say don't try to actively trade it unless you're prepared to go through the process of setting all of that uh, stuff up with something like uh, real-time bitcoins. It's a, to be honest with you, it's a massive amount of, it's a big pain in the ass basically, because you've, there's all the security measures that you've got to take, you've got to download stuff, you've got a lot of stuff that you need to do in order to make sure you're secure and in order to make sure that they, they'll take you as a client. Once you're in, then you're pretty much fine. Um, but what I found is that with the huge amount of um, recent interest into um, Bitcoin trading and so forth, that there's not a single provider that's been able to handle it. Okay, so it's all, it will settle down. It will settle down. But if you if you're transferring money, like if we, we transferred some money into the Volta Satoshi, it took about eight days to arrive. Um, in, we tried to open an account with a real time Bitcoin. There was so there's it took, it's week over a week and still can't do it because of all the little things that you need to do with it, with security and downloading stuff and so forth. So to set yourself up to trade, um, it is a bit of hard work, particularly now. It's, I believe it's going to get easier. You know, there'll be other companies that come up they'll, because they'll see the, the, the profitability in it. The fees will come down and so forth. But the, the main thing to be aware of is that um, the, you don't want to just be running around and buying willy-nilly. And what I've shown you in that those simple movements, they work on any market, whether, you want, whether you're talking about the currency market, the stock market, um, soybean futures or what have you. It's, just, it's the same principles, okay? So that's, that's it. So that's um, trading in a nutshell. Thanks, guys. And um, we'll move on. Thanks.